I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to build and configure a LilyGo T-Beam Mesh-tastic radio that'll let you send long-range encrypted text messages, GPS data, and more to your friends without Wi-Fi or cell coverage. It's completely off-grid and decentralized. We'll go over the $50 worth of parts you'll need, including the exact frequency and GPS version you should choose. I'll show you the 3D printed case I went with, the required hardware, where you can download the files for free, or where you can purchase a 3D printed case from Etsy if you don't have access to a 3D printer. We'll assemble everything and I'll walk through a basic mesh-tastic firmware setup and connection to your cell phone so you can get started as quickly as possible. Now, there are a number of supported devices for mesh-tastic. A popular one is the Rack WizBlock. LilyGo has a ton of different options and the Helltech radios are pretty common as well. I'm not gonna get into a big comparison as to why I chose this one, but this T-Beam will make a perfect portable uh, LoRa radio, or if you wanna have a dedicated node um, that has dedicated power supplied to it. It's not gonna be the best for a solar uh, node because it is a little power hungry. I would recommend the whiz block if you're gonna do that. I actually have a number of whiz blocks on order, so I'll be doing more videos on those once I get them. All right, so as far as parts, you can try going to the LilyGo website. I'll have links to all the parts in the description below, um, but right now they're all sold out. The most important thing that you need to make sure you get right is the frequency. So if you're in the US, you have to choose the 915 megahertz uh, frequency. That's the frequency you wanna choose. You don't need a license to operate in that frequency. But as you can see, um, both versions of the 915 are sold out. So I actually got mine directly from AliExpress. Now, one thing to note, I actually bought the SX1262 version. Um, as you can see, it's currently out of stock. This is the SX1276 version. I don't really know the difference. All I know is according to the Meshtastic website, the 1262 has improved performance versus the 1276, which is a little counterintuitive because you'd think a higher number would be like the next version, the better version. So apparently this 1262 is the better version. So if you can get that, um, go ahead and do that. That's the one I got. Um, but this one will work as well. Really the most important thing is the 915 frequency if you're in the US. And the other thing you need to decide is whether you need high precision GPS. So this version right here, the M8N uh, GPS module, it's more expensive. It's like $10 more expensive, but it's gonna have a much more accurate GPS. Now in my case, my intention for this particular T-Beam is to have it set up in my house dedicated power supply, it's never gonna move. So I don't really care about the GPS functionality. So I just figured I'd save 10 bucks and go with the $38 version. And this is what you're gonna get in that box. So this is the T-Beam, it's fully assembled. It has an 18650 holder mounted on the back. You can use this as is, you don't need to do any soldering or any sort of assembly really. It does have an optional display that you can install that you would have to solder on. I'm actually gonna run this without a display because it's gonna be a stationary node. I don't really need um, you know, user feedback. I can kind of configure everything either through the computer or through my cell phone. But in the case, you will also get the antenna. The antenna is gonna depend on which frequency you chose. So again, because I'm in the US, I chose the 915 frequency, and this does have a 90 degree bend on it, which is nice. Um, this is kind of an awkward positioning for this. I know some people have like dropped their T-beams and like kind of broke this connector. So it is nice that this does fold and offers a little bit of protection in case you do drop it. Um, and then also obviously to, uh, to store it, um, it's nice to have that. But really the most important thing, you need to make sure you screw this antenna on before you put a battery in here. Otherwise you can burn out, um, you can burn out the T-beam. You also get some pins in here and under this side, there's a little pamphlet. Honestly, I don't really know what this is. It's like a link to a GitHub. So I don't know if this is like the firmware or something, but um, I don't know. It's not something we really need to worry about. All right, the next thing you're gonna wanna get is an 18650 battery. Unless you're just gonna run this thing connected to USB power, you can totally do that as well. But you just need to make sure, I guess apparently there's different versions of 18650s. You need to get the one with the flat top battery, not the button top or protected version. So I looked around on Amazon and it was kind of sketchy. I ended up buying mine after kind of researching, you know, best place to get 18650s. 18650batterystore.com is where I got mine. 
when you click on 18650 batteries, you'll see there is a filter for flat top. Apparently it's like the most common, uh, the common type. And then you can choose which battery you wanna buy there. Now, once the battery's installed in the device, you can actually charge the battery through the USB port on the T-Beam itself. So you don't need a dedicated battery charger if you don't want one. All right, the next thing you're gonna need is a case. Now this is the my favorite case that I found uh, so far. There's a ton of open source cases that you can look for. You can design your own, but I'll leave a link to this one in the description below. This is the T-Beam V1X case for Meshtastic by Tony G. Uh, phenomenal design, I really love it. Tons of different versions to customize the look. You can kind of pick whichever look that you want. He also has some designs for some other um, radios, which I'll be doing some builds for later on as well. But when you download and unzip the files, you're gonna be overwhelmed because there's literally like a hundred different files in here. Um, so it can be a little confusing. So what you need to do is go to the PDF, just scroll down till you get to the minimum required model files. Now there's two different uh, kind of variations like we went over when we were looking at the radio on AliExpress. So you have the IPEX uh, version with the M8N GPS module, and you have the SMA version with the 6M GPS module. So depending on which one you choose, you're going to want to print out a different set of models. So I went with the 6M version. So I need to scroll down to the T-Beam V7 frame 6M. And then even there, I have four different options. So there's a version that includes a TPU file um, that'll kind of snap over and cover the buttons here. I didn't choose that version. So I went with the no button cover version and I did the double lanyard. So that's just these two loops right here. So I really like that. Um, so that's the version I used for the frame. And then for the front, you have a number of different versions for the front. So I'll be looking at the T-Beam V6 front 6M. So you have all of these options all the way down to here for the front. Now you'll notice a lot of all of these right here are 25 millimeter. That's if you have a 25 millimeter GPS antenna. And you'll also notice a bunch of them um, labeled no screen. So if you're not gonna be putting a screen on your radio, which I actually wasn't planning on doing it and I kind of screwed up and put printed out one with the screen. Um, so I'm gonna print out another one that doesn't have the screen or I don't know, I might end up adding one, um, but it's up to you. If you wanna add a screen to the radio, you wanna make sure you print out a front that has the opening for it. If you're not gonna have a screen, you choose one of the no screen versions. And there's just a ton of aesthetic designs that you can choose from um, out of all of those different options. After you choose your front, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the V7 back 18650. You'll print one of those. And lastly, you need to print out three buttons. So you can either do the short buttons or the tall version. The ones I chose to do were the short version. Now you're also gonna need some bolts and nuts. I just bought this kit from Amazon. It's the Cadric assorted um, fasteners. I'll have a link for this in the description below. But you'll need four M3 16 millimeter uh, bolts, four M3 nuts. That's gonna be for the case. And then you'll need four M2 four millimeter bolts to attach the radio to the case. All right, so to assemble the radio, you're gonna take the 3D printed frame and pop the buttons into the holes. Then you take the T-beam, drop it into place, and you just have to be careful with this wire that goes through the board. I think this is the GPS antenna, so just make sure you're not pinching it. Then you take four of the M2 four millimeter bolts and thread them right into the plastic. You don't need any nuts on the other side. Next, again, make sure the antenna is installed so you don't burn out the radio and then make sure to double check the polarity of the battery and the holder before installing the battery. Now, I noticed the GPS antenna seems to interfere with the back of the case here and it seems like there's this little spot hollowed out for it in the case. I didn't really see anything written about this in the uh, 3D printed design uh, details. So I just repositioned it in there as I placed the back onto the frame. And there's a little bit of adhesive on the antenna to kind of keep it from rattling around in there. 
Then you just take the front, snap that on, and install four M3 16 millimeter bolts and nuts at each corner, and that's it. So you've now got your radio fully assembled. It should already have Meshtastic installed, ready to go, but it's best to kind of make sure you have the latest firmware. So let's go ahead and plug it into the computer and get that updated. So I'm doing this on a Windows computer, and before you connect the device to your computer with a USB cable, you want to open up Device Manager. So just tap the uh, Start Menu button, type in device manager and you'll pull up this window here you're going to want to go down to ports uh, com and lpt then just take a micro usb cable plug it into your computer and plug in the radio now you'll see this refresh and hopefully you see a new device pop up in the device manager. Now, if your computer doesn't detect it, you'll have to go to the installing serial drivers to install the driver so it's detected properly. I'll have a link to this uh, below. But next, you'll want to go to flasher.meshtastic.org. They have a web-based flasher. If you use a Chrome browser, it's super easy to use. You literally just um, select the device. So we're going to select T-Beam. We'll select the firmware version. Um, so I'm, I would just recommend selecting one of the latest uh, stable versions and then click flash. It tells you a summary of that specific firmware version. Go down to the bottom, click continue. I'm going to do a full erase and install to uh, start from scratch and we'll click the button at the bottom and then it's going to ask you to select that device. Um, so whatever device you saw in the device manager that was added when you plugged in the T-Beam, that's the one you're want, gonna wanna pick here. So we could see here, USB enhanced serial COM6. That's the one we're gonna pick right here and we'll click connect. Now at the bottom here, you will kind of see this console. Uh, it takes a few minutes to run through the whole thing, but one thing that's really important, especially if you don't have a display connected to your T-Beam, you wanna make sure you leave this screen open because you need to, um, it's gonna give you like a console readout. And so when we connect this to our phone with Bluetooth, it's gonna provide a code. And since we don't have a display on the T-Beam, we need to wait uh, and see what the code is in the console. All right, so on your phone, open up the Meshtastic app and under the Bluetooth menu at the bottom, you'll see available radios. So tap on the radio, it's gonna connect and see how uh, on the console, you'll see enter passkey and it gives you a number. Um, so the default number is one, two, three, four, five, six. The phone will ask you for that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, hit pair and you'll see if it connects. All right, so there we go. So now, um, the reason why I like using the phone to set up the radio is, is it's kind of um, more straightforward. So you're gonna set the LoRa region. So I'm in the US, so I'll tap United States. And you can just leave all of the defaults. Um, so for presets, long fast, long range fast, number of hops, all this stuff. We're gonna just leave default and we'll tap save at the bottom. So that will save it to the device and you can see it's rebooting now. So it's going through and rebooting the radio and it'll reconnect automatically to the phone. And there we go. So now under nodes, we can see um, the radio that we just built is connected to the phone. We have our messages, our channels, the mesh map, um, and everything uh, that we need to use this with Meshtastic. All right, guys, so that's kind of a quick overview for getting this thing set up and running. Um, again, all the parts lists and everything, all the links will be in the description below if you wanna build one of these yourselves. I also have a T-Beam Supreme and I have some whiz blocks on the way. So I'm gonna build some solar nodes and uh, kind of experiment with this. I'm really excited about Meshtastic. So uh, if you wanna catch some of those videos, make sure you subscribe and uh, I will be releasing those once I get those in. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.